In Germany, there's uh, two kinds of PhD programs. There's a structured and an unstructured PhD. Or the people who got uh, the German Research Foundation funding, they were getting about 2,000 plus, even after tax. Postdoctoral contracts are usually between two and three years long. Sometimes you can extend it, and then, but it's recommended to change institutes. So, okay. So my name is um, Ayodeji Taiwo, uh, and uh, I've been in uh, Munich now for almost nine years. Uh, I work as uh, a consultant in the technology area and um, yeah I guess uh, that's a brief about myself we can always go into the details oh one more thing I have a PhD in uh, geophysics and I got that here in, uh, in Munich I moved here in 2015 uh, at the time I before I moved here I was working as a graduate intern at Procter & Gamble in uh, Nigeria so I met a German guy online by coincidence and he told me hey, you know what you want to study here so I told him that I wouldn't mind studying here so he showed me how to do the application and uh, he helped me submit my, my documents to the LMU in Munich here. And uh, a couple of months later, I got the admission and then tried to do the whole blocked account thing for the visa and everything. And everything worked out for me. So after my youth service in 2015, I came within a few months later, by September, I, or October, sorry, I was already here in Munich. So right now, I work um, as a consultant uh, here in, uh, in Munich for a consultancy that is headquartered in um, Frankfurt and um, they have an office here at Grunwald. Um, we work majorly on technology projects and uh, I'm currently focusing on the insurance area. And um, although the company has many other areas that they consult in, such as mobility, energy, telecommunications, healthcare and many other things. But right now I'm in the insurance area and I'm anticipating a move to the energy, energy branch. All right. I have to give a caveat at the beginning because uh, I applied in 2014 and between then and now I'm sure many things have changed but the general process involved um, getting my transcripts, getting my uh, recommendation letters from about two to three lecturers. I also wrote the English language examination, that's the TOEFL and uh, even though some schools don't require it but I did it for safety just to be on the safer side and um, once I gathered these documents together I went to the website of the department I wanted to apply for at the LMU. I also applied for the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology at the Karlsruhe School of Optics and Photonics. So I was accepted at LMU for geophysics and at Karlsruhe for optics and photonics. And um, I decided to come to Munich because of the, the size of the city and uh, it's much more international. But basically the application is, um, it's, you need your transcript, your certificates, your English language certificate also, a motivation letter, and uh, you submit these documents to the school and you wait for them to give you an admission letter and basically follow the instructions of the school because they change from time to time. Okay, so for a PhD, it's much more specialized than uh, a master's degree. Um, if I recall correctly, in Germany, there's uh, two kinds of PhD programs. There's a structured and an unstructured PhD. So a structured, as the name implies, has a particular structure to it. You have a set time in which you're supposed to finish your research, and um, there's programs planned for you for each year. So for a structured PhD program, for example, they would have a common admission date for everybody that applies and they have uh, a common application process where you upload the documents and uh, you have all of you come together for the selected candidates for a group interview for everybody and then eventually the different professors pick the students that they want and they provide them funding for a number of years and every year there are milestones you must achieve there are things you must do maybe classes you must take for to supplement your knowledge and things like that and um, after the four years, elap four years elapsed, then you are expected to have submitted your thesis. For an unstructured PhD program, um, there's no such, um, such thing in place. You have to write the professors directly, and then you, both of you apply for funding, maybe from the German Research Foundation or from private institutes like uh, the Catholic uh, Institute that give out scholarships, or from the DAAD, that's the German Academic Exchange Service. And uh, when you get the funding, you then start your PhD. There's no structure to it, so there's no classes you must take. You only you decide with your professor if there's any class you need to take to get your supplementary knowledge. And uh, each of them has an advantage and disadvantages. I did an unstructured PhD, so my PhD was funded by the DAAD, that's the German Academic Exchange Service. And uh, the advantage that came with the DAAD was that I had um, six months of language classes before my PhD started. So between October 2017 and March of 2018, I was in Cologne for those six months learning German, doing nothing else fully funded and uh, afterwards I wrote uh, my test staff on the B2C1 level so that gave me the advantage I could already speak German even before starting my PhD which also helped me then with securing a job here and, and things like that so um, I on the, on the flip side the DAD stipend was very very small particularly for Munich I was earning just 1,000 euros a month 
eventually they increased it to 1,200 euros a month. But the people who were in structured PhD programs or the people who got uh, the German Research Foundation funding, they were getting about 2,000 plus even after tax. So everything has the, the pros and their cons. Okay, so I would say that this is actually dependent on your field. And it's not only in Germany, it's also the same way everywhere in the world. So a person who does a PhD in history, for example, will probably have less opportunities than somebody who does it in STEM field, you know, science and technology, engineering, mathematics. But generally, broadly speaking, the opportunities are in two directions. You can either stay in academia or you can go to the industry. If you want to stay in academia, you have to think about doing a postdoctorate. And if you go to the industry, you can also work with your PhD. People who go for postdoctorates, they tend to move from time to time because postdoctoral contracts are usually between two and three years long. Sometimes you can extend it and then, but it's recommended to change institutes. So you most likely will not do a postdoctorate at the same institute where you got your PhD. Your advisor would likely recommend you somewhere else within Germany or outside Germany. And um, you have to move. But if you, want to, if you want to go to the industry, then you can always, maybe one year before you finish, apply for a job, which is also what I did. And um, one caveat I have to mention about people who want to stay in academia after their PhD is that you have to be very, very careful, particularly as a Nigerian, because you have two types of, uh, of status. You can either have an employment contract, which means that you are paying tax into the system and you can get permanent residency during your PhD, or you are on a scholarship, which means that you, are not, you don't get permanent residency at all. You're just, you're, you're just a student. And then when you finish your PhD, you are given an 18-month visa. You start hustling for a job. Because I was on a scholarship, I didn't get this employment status. I was on student status throughout my PhD, so which meant that I had to start my job search earlier. But my friends who got contracts for their PhDs, by the time they were about to finish, they already had permanent residency. Some people had even stayed long enough to get German passports with their, with their PhD during their PhD program. So think about the kind of funding that you want, the kind of status that is okay for you. And um, if you are going to do a postdoctorate, I would suggest that you ensure that you do it within Germany if you've not yet secured a German passport or a permanent residency. Because I don't think it's a good idea to accumulate four, five, six years of time here only to move out of here to go and start all over again in another place. If you're already in Germany for your master's degree, then uh, it shouldn't be too difficult to get a supervisor. If you do well in your classes and you approach the professors in your institute, they can have a position for you or they can recommend you somewhere else within Germany where their colleagues are working. But um, So that's always much more straightforward. If you're coming from Nigeria, the ideal way is to go online you know, with Google, just search for the, 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 your field and search for universities in Germany that are offering courses in your field. You don't have to go through the effort of checking the different universities and different departmental websites and, and narrow down till you find the professors that are interesting to you and you shoot them an email, you know, and then they can schedule a call with you or they can also schedule a that you can write back and forth emails. One thing that's attractive to professors is if they see you have good grades also in Nigeria and if you have a very clear proposal. For example, in my institute, we focused on uh, theoretical geophysics. So not applied geophysics, so majorly theoretical stuff. And many applicants from Nigeria who wanted to do PhDs there, they were writing in the application that they want to work in oil and gas afterwards. But um, our department is not an oil and gas focused uh, geophysics department. We are focused more on the deeper, deeper earth where oil and mineral resources are not of interest. Such people would be better off applying to applied geophysics programs, not theoretical geophysics. And the professors were always very upset when people would send these applications to them because it showed that they didn't even read the website to know what they are doing. So try and read the website in detail, see who is doing what you are interested in and apply to them. And uh, most likely, if you're coming from Nigeria, you may have to come with one of these scholarships, like the GA scholarship, because uh, whether we like it or not, there's always some skepticism about the quality of our degree back home. And uh, a professor is not going to be willing to risk his own personal funding on you until he has seen that you have the quality. So it's most likely going to work with a DAAD scholarship, which I think is also not a bad idea, as long as you have your plan and strategize what you want to do as soon as the PhD program is finished. PhD program in Germany can be very, very intensive and uh, they, focus, they want you to publish high quality papers and uh, it can be also very, very stressful. Generally, PhDs are very stressful all, all over the world, but in Germany it can also be extra stressful, particularly when you live in a city like Munich, you are thinking about your accommodation, you are thinking about living expenses, and then you are also doing a stressful PhD program. One thing I can advise to PhD candidates is that they should never give up. In my PhD, I started in April 2018, and from April 2018 to uh, December of 2021, I made very minimal progress. 
the most progress came from December 2021 up to December 2022 when I finally submitted my thesis. So I had nine months where I really made a lot of progress and I, I would say I killed it, you know. And that's what now got me then to be awarded the, the award for excellent PhD thesis in my department. So my progress came in the last nine months to one year of the PhD. And this is something that many people have to keep in mind, never to give up, to keep showing up every day and give your best in the program.